Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G, still with these stupid hat glasses. Loops, samples, and one-shots have been very popular for the last 25 years, particular in genres and subgenres of hip-hop. But even before those audio loops, there was MIDI. And now MIDI loops are kind of making a comeback. I think that's largely being driven by the fact there are so MIDI generation programs that are out there that will create chord progressions, bass parts, drum licks, and melodies for you. The popularity of those MIDI generation tools is kind of pushing MIDI back to the forefront. Now for a beginner or even an intermediate music producer, you need to know the difference between MIDI loops and audio loops. And a key point of this video is how to browse and preview those MIDI loops before you drag them into your DAW. So a sample, a loop, or a one-shot is generally an audio file. These ones are in WAV format, and you could just browse them in your Finder window. Here's a drum beat. Here's a melody. And you can just drag these into your DAW and then play them in the DAW. For samples, loops, and one-shots, I like to use ADSR Sample Manager as my library management tool, but it only handles audio files. It does it well, and there's a link in the description and up above to describe why I use ADSR. So ADSR Sample Manager is a great tool for previewing searching and browsing audio files, but doesn't work with MIDI files. MIDI files are a little bit different. They don't contain any audio. They're just instructions of notes and how to play those notes. So there's no previewing a MIDI file unless you drag it into your DAW. So I'm creating a new track and now I have to assign it an instrument. By default, Logic has assigned it to the piano. And I can double click that region to see the actual MIDI notes that are being played. And I can change the instrument from piano to something else. So in some ways, a MIDI file has a lot more potential because you can change the instruments and you can edit the MIDI, whereas the audio file, being a loop, a sample, or a one-shot, is pretty much the sound that you heard in the preview. One unique feature Logic has is MIDI loops that are in a specific format called CAF. You can enable these in the clip browser by just clicking on MIDI loops. And the interesting thing about these particular files is you can preview them. Because they are not MID files, they're CAF files, they do contain instructions on how they should be played. So you're hearing the MIDI, plus you're hearing some sound. A normal MIDI file would not have these, but you can drag these into your DAW as well. And you'll see it inherits the string acoustic guitar. But those types of MIDI files are relatively rare. You're not going to find them out on the internet. You can't download free CAF files. They only come from Apple. It's a proprietary format. Normally, if you buy a MIDI bundle of some kind, it's just going to come with MID files. One feature in Logic is the event list. And this shows you what's coming from the MIDI file. It's got the position, status, the note that's being played, and the velocity. Sometimes a MIDI file contains CC information, pitch control, sustain, aftertouch. MIDI files have been very popular for drum patterns and drum grooves, but they're often called grooves, not MIDI files, which can be a little bit confusing. Here I have Goram Grooves Handy Drums Rock Legend. If I click on this icon, I can browse through some of the drum patterns with their MIDI loop browser. So what I'm able to do here is preview the MIDI file before I drag it into my DAW to hear if it's something I want to use.
And I could use that MIDI file with any drum software, not just Gorham Grooves. I could drag it into another drum program or change the sound of the drums. The MIDI is just the notes that are being played. Another drum example is BFD drums. You choose a kit, pick the drum sounds that you like, and then you can go into their Grooves library and you can sort by genre, what the leading sound is. Is it a snare? Is it a kick? The timing, dynamics, this helps filter what you actually see. So if I pick, say, pop rock, and then I can preview these sounds. I can save favorites and come back to that later. And again, these are just MIDI files that are playing the sounds in the BFD player. The MIDI files themselves don't have any embedded sounds. So you could use these MIDI files with any drum software. So you can see the dilemma. Unlike audio files, which you can just open in ADSR Sample Manager or click on the space bar within a finder window and hear the results, you need some way to preview these MIDI files without having to open up a DAW or a drum machine app or some lengthy program just to hear what the patterns are and what it sounds like. So my criteria was for something lightweight that doesn't use a lot of CPU and RAM that you could just click on, preview these files, and then decide which ones you want to use. Ideally, if this program was free, that's even better. Well, after some research, I found NS Media Player. It's in the Apple App Store, so it's easy to download and install on a Mac. So let me show you how this works. After you download and install Media Assistant, on a Mac, it's going to appear in your Applications folder. So if you just scroll down to the M, it's in alphabetical order here, MIDI Player. You can open up a MIDI file different ways. You could just drag and drop the MIDI file in there. I'm just going to open up this one. There's a lot of options here. One is a loop option. So as you play that file, it'll just play it over and over again. So that loop option is actually better used when you're reviewing, say, a drum fill or a drum loop. There are settings, pretty basic things. It's not a sophisticated program. The accent color comes up as blue. You can enable autoplay, and the advantage of autoplay is every time you click on a MIDI file, it's automatically going to play that file for you. I'll show you how I'm using that. It does have a reverb option. If you want to hear these MIDI files without any reverb, just turn that off. You can see it has sort of a wet dry mix default of 40%. And you can control the volume either within the app or use your system volume. In my case, I like to use the system volume. Another feature it has is just the pace at which it replays that MIDI file. By default, it's going to play it back at the same rate that it was recorded. I don't use that feature too much, but it's handy if you're playing around with a drum beat and you want to control the tempo. So here you can actually tap the tempo if the recorded tempo of that drum beat is different than something you want to hear. It does have track control, so a lot of your MIDI will be in stereo with two tracks, but a lot of it is in mono. And if you wanted to mute or solo one of those tracks, you can do it here. Another nice feature is that you can load a bunch of songs, or what they call songs, but are really just a bunch of MIDI files. If I click on Add, interested in these chord progressions, but I want to just hear them all in a row and see how they sound. And then there's some options here. You can have it loop through them or randomly play it, and you can change the order. But the advantage of that is if you're comparing different MIDI patterns, you can just sort of play them one after another. Skip to the next one. Skip to the next one. Let's see how that would work, say, with different drum beats. So I'm going to clear this list, just selecting a bunch of different drum loops here. You can see it's skipping through from one to the next. So I can kind of listen to those drum beats before I decide which one I want to use. And although they have a default tempo, I wanted to change that tempo to say slightly slower than 124, say 114. 
and I can skip forward and ahead. So it's just a good way to try out different drum beats before I go and drag them into my DAW. I think I've covered all the basic controls, but let me show you how I've set that up, which is a little bit more advanced than what I'm showing you so far. I've navigated to my library or the file directory where I have all my MIDI loops and MIDI files stored. And by default, if I was to click or press the space bar, it would open it with the MIDI player. And that's the way I want to have it. So I can just double click on something or hit the space bar and hear what that file is made up of. If you right click and get info, you can pick which application opens by default when you press the space bar or double click. And I've set it to the MIDI player. And that means that all files with the MID extension are gonna use this as the player. So it doesn't matter what I pick in here. If I double click, it opens up the MIDI player. And that's exactly what I wanted. Something lightweight, a way to browse and preview the files without having to open up my DAW. Hopefully this video gets you on the right track. And if you found it useful, click on the like button. Feel free to add comments and your opinions on things. I always respond to the comments. Consider subscribing to the channel and clicking on the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.